welcome to this webinar series of uh, open pathshala it's the first first webinar and today in this webinar we are going to see the basic of sanskrit language like uh, how how one should get started with uh, learning sanskrit so it's going to be a really interesting session and uh, with me i have samita joining with me sarvebhyah namo namaha uh, hello i am samita joshi i am from i am from india and i live in mumbai uh, i have completed my masters in sanskrit grammar from mumbai university uh, i am pursuing parinis grammar at my guru's place since 7 years open parshala is one of the ways which uh, gives me an opportunity to propagate my passion for sanskrit it is said that marga rabthah sarva yatnah falanti this means if you have right approach you will get right results so here in this webinar we are making a small endeavor to put some right approaches to learn sanskrit so let us see what will be what we will be discussing in this seminar first let us see in brief what do we mean by word sanskrit sanskrit is derived from root sam plus kru it means well or completely refined or processed so sanskrit is a language which is considered as completely refined or processed language sanskrit is considered as one of the most ancient languages of world it is also one of the 22 scheduled languages of india it is the direct descendant of proto indo european languages it is also considered as mother of lots of languages in indian sub subcontinent now if we see that sanskrit language is not about being oldest or more beautiful than any other language it is about the link between various indian languages uh, whether it is assamese or manipuri is in the extreme east or uh, gujarati in the extreme west or kashmiri in the north or malayalam or tamil in the south all these languages have great impact of sanskrit look at your own mother tongue if you are an indian you can see that there are number of words in your own mother tongue which have been come uh, which have been come or derived from sanskrit itself so sanskrit gives us connect to various regions of india it is a link between different regions of indian subcontinent so if you know sanskrit you can easily connect with indian culture and people around here some the study of sanskrit makes you efficient to understand indian people and its culture very well one of the important reasons why i have opted for sanskrit is that it is a communication it gives us an opportunity to communicate with our past through literature and gets access to the stored wisdom initially after my, after completion of my school uh, studies i have opted for sanskrit just because i have passion for it but later on i have understood that it works as a foundation for each and every branch of knowledge of indian subcontinent i'm not telling that it is the basis of every branch of knowledge all over the world but if you consider the most of most of it, branches of knowledge which, which have been flourished in india have their roots in sanskrit that's why if you learn sanskrit you can easily connect with different branches of knowledge over here ancient india's scientific works are also written in sanskrit they are quite famous for example indian mathematicians were far more intelligent in this field if we see mathematicians like aryabhat Bhar bharadwaj they were quite uh, quite famous and they had made great cont contribution to the field of maths they were extremely phenomenal if we see mathematic treatises now be physics chemistry metallurgy or from humanities like philosophy psychology linguistics and any for that matter we find their roots in sanskrit learning sanskrit gives us multi dimensional pathway to ancient wisdom let us consider panini's ashtadhyayi it is considered as one of the highest epitome of human intelligence all over the world thus it gives us pathway to explore ancient india's scientific works as well as humanities work or philosophical work now if we see in practical in practicality what does sanskrit do if we look around various mantras and chants are written in sanskrit priest comes to our house 
he performs some rituals and then he goes we feel that we should be able to understand what that priest says and what does that mean that feeling is not enough if we want to learn what mantras and chants are actually uh, want uh, want to convey us we need to understand sanskrit for that matter they give us these mantras have great message to give us it uh, it wishes well being of all it sings glory of lord and many more so these mantras and chants can only be understood by learning sanskrit it is very much evident it is an amazing language for naming and branding now you can see in modern world various uh, various brand names are famous uh, from their sanskrit names for example yoga guru pandit all these names have become so popular and they have uh, they are actually included in the various dictionaries uh, let us take an example um, one of the agencies of indian government is called mudra now in sanskrit mudra means impression or you can also you can also interpret as as currency but our indian government has used it so uh, intelligently that it is an acronym for micro units development and refinance agency similar with niti ayog niti means morality again it's an acronym of national institute of transforming india so we can see that um, uh, we can see that this language has number of words which can be used as the unique uh, names for branding and naming as i have stated earlier that it unlocks the stored wisdom built over thousands of years we have great literatures like bhagavad gita vedas upanishads these literature have great wisdom in their wings so in this way sanskrit gives us pathway to enter into this faculty of wisdom and understand it in a proper way now how to start learning sanskrit first of all i will suggest all of you that if you have particular focus in learning sanskrit then zero down that or decide first what is your field of interest for example some people say that we like to understand we like to learn kalidasa's poetry and dramas we don't want to learn other things we just want to learn uh, sanskrit literature while some say no grammar is basic we should learn grammar first then only we will be able to understand other sanskrit text some people don't want to study grammar poetics philosophy and so on they just want to have sanskrit on their tip of tongue so they want conversation sanskrit conversation so if you have such field of interest first decide what is that if you have decided that then i would suggest you first to learn grammar it is it is not because i am fond of grammar but basically learning grammar gives you a great foundation to venture into any sanskrit text grammar is considered as mukha that means mouth to enter uh, into the vedic uh, field of knowledge so it is it is said that mukham vyakaranam smrutam but if you don't study grammar then it will be a uh, really difficult for you to crack the crux of any sanskrit literature so it is very much important to learn basic grammar of sanskrit i am not saying directly go to learn, uh, directly start learning panini ashtadhyayi but you can have number of resources in fact you have number of resources where you can actually get the knowledge of basic sanskrit grammar one of them is open pathshala where we provide sanskrit grammar video tutorials at three levels basic intermediate and advanced then along with this you must start conversation as well let me give you one example of mine when i completed my school studies i was very much good at grammar but i was unable to speak in sanskrit converse in it fluently then somebody told me to start sanskrit conversation though i was good at sanskrit grammar i was unable to converse it converse in sanskrit fluently i was lacking in that very badly i went to uh, one of uh, camps of sanskrit bharati it was for 15 days for first 5 days i was i was behaving like a dumb because i was unable to speak in sanskrit but later on after fifth day i accumulated confidence and started speaking small small sentences in sanskrit after finishing that camp my experience was so beautiful that from that uh, point i can now i can speak in sanskrit fluently and without any obstruction 
when i thought upon that when i delve uh, into that i got to know that the atmosphere around me was very much responsible for that everybody was everybody there was speaking sanskrit 24 hours so there was no excuse of speaking in any other language so that made me very much confident to speak in sanskrit so if you have good atmosphere around you who speak in sanskrit this gives you great confidence and brushes up your skill of sanskrit conversation there are sanskrit uh, uh, there is a sanskrit bharati an ngo uh, which is very much active in india as well as abroad which uh, gives you uh, sanskrit conversation camps uh, it is for 10 days and then they have number of levels for sanskrit conversation and where you uh, where you can brush up your skills of sanskrit conversation so if you uh, if you get uh, contact of uh, one of uh, mm, one of branches of sanskrit bharati i must recommend you to go there and join some sanskrit conversation camp it is said that shata pandita shata shlokaha panditaha shata shlokaha panditaha it means that if you learn 100 subhashitas or shlokas then you are equal to pandita now don't take it literally because learning subhashita is not just by hearting or reading its translation if you learn if you take one subhashita and try to understand each and every word of that subhashita then only you will be able to accumulate the vocabulary of sanskrit so if you continue with this task and completes 100 subhashitas then you are equal to a person who has good mastery over sanskrit vocabulary as well as sanskrit sentence construction so you can start with this endeavor as well take some simple subhashita or take some simple shloka for example tvameva mata pita tvameva this is quite popular shloka now here you can take each and every word and try to understand its meaning tvam tvam means you eva eva is indeclinable which is which is generally used to emphasize something mata mata means mother so in this way you can divide each and every word of that subhashita and understand the meaning of that subhashita entirely if you continue with this task and if you finish it with if you finish with 100 subhashitas then i am sure you will be considered as one of the person who has great demand over sanskrit language so do try this if you are done with your basic grammar then you can read some short stories or dramas and magazines which are published in sanskrit unfortunately magazines sanskrit magazines are not available online not much available online i mean there are two three magazines which you can access online for example sambhashana sandesha of sanskrit bharati they have uh, this magazine which is written in very simple sanskrit it it is available online i mean you can subscribe as well so you can directly get hard copy of that along with that sanskrit bhavitavyam is another magazine which you can get online for sure and there are number of magazines uh, in sanskrit uh, we can give you list of that as well now uh, talking about short stories and dramas many a times we don't access short stories online uh, so you have books like panchatantra hitopadesha along with their translation so you can read out some sanskrit story from that and if you don't understand the meaning of particular word you can look out to the translation this gives you a good practice of reading sanskrit and your vocabulary will also in increase then you can shift to some dramas there are some simple uh, and short dramas called karnabhara and urubhanga of bhasa now people generally say that we want to learn shakuntala of kalidasa that this is true but at times it becomes very difficult to understand even if you have translation many a times these translations are maligned with biased interpretations or partial interpretations so it is better to learn sanskrit original sanskrit text so first you can start with some small sanskrit dramas and then you can shift to the bigger one now i would like you to concentrate on this point that group studies for practice and conversation see so if you have a good group of sanskrit uh, of sans uh, if you have good group of people interested in sanskrit you must come together and practice and call sanskrit converse and converse in sanskrit as well you can also invite some sanskrit scholar uh, around your area and uh, decide one topic and have his lecture uh, in your group 
at the same time as i have said you need good atmosphere for sanskrit conversation so if you have a good group of people who are really inclined to learning a conversation in sanskrit you can easily uh, crack this skill of sanskrit conversation so for any kind of sanskrit study if you have group of good people then it will surely help you many times people say that we lack in vocabulary we don't know sanskrit words this is very much true because if you start learning any new language vocabulary will always be considered as a barrier but don't worry in sanskrit we have number of resources which act as a vocabulary builders for example there is one treatise called amarakosha it is an ancient one now this amarakosha gives us list of synonyms let me give you one example there is a verse called in amarakosha apastri bhumni varvari salilam kamalam jalam now this particular verse gives us synonyms of water for example apah apah is considered is again uh, um, synonym of water apah var vari salila kamala and jala these are six there are number of uh, synonyms to uh, to water in sanskrit so in this way you can understand which words are used which word are which words are used as a synonym for particular word there are number of uh, books uh, of amarkosha which are available online though it is in a verse form its translations or uh, synonyms given uh, with divisions are also available then we have sanskrit vyavahara sahasri it is one of the publications of sanskrit bharati it gives us a list of words which sanskrit words which can be used in a practical uh, in our daily life or in uh, in sanskrit conversation for example soap is called fenaka in sanskrit or um, chair is called asand so it gives you number of sanskrit words of uh, things which are around us so you can surely refer to these two books to in, uh, to increase your vocabulary along with this there are number of sanskrit uh, vocabulary builders as well which uh, we will surely provide you now let us move to some barriers in learning sanskrit some people feel that uh, they are less motivated it is there may be number of reasons behind this they feel that we are unable to keep up the consistency but i feel one of the reasons behind this is that we don't get the atmosphere around us which is very much pro sanskrit for example we don't see people around us speaking in sanskrit if we lack in particular language and if we see people around us are very uh, well versed in that in that language then we feel inspired to learn that language more similarly if we have people around us who speak sanskrit fluently we will surely be inspired and we will be making some good efforts to learning sanskrit so this uh, excuse can be ruled out for sure or this or this barrier can be ruled out for sure then some people say we don't have time then some people uh, feel that they are not confident enough to speak the language it may be because of fear of pronunciation or precise pronunciation uh, there is fear of uh, there is fear among people that sanskrit should be pronounced properly and precisely if you uh, if you make mistake in pronouncing some word then it is uh, not Uh, allowed in uh, sanskrit it is not so these prejudices will not work if you want to learn sanskrit so without uh, having this fear just go for it you will surely learn it in a better way worrying about making mistakes as i have said earlier some people say we don't know resources uh, which will help us in learning sanskrit i believe that there is a lack of knowledge of resources which are useful for sanskrit uh, for other languages like english french german there are various online resources but for sanskrit there are very less but in the end of this ppt or in the end of this webinar we will we will be giving uh, you number of resources which you can easily access again there is a problem of vocabulary right vocabulary but uh, it can also be ruled out by learning by rigorously learning uh, some sanskrit treatises because without making practice of uh, this language nobody is going to help you and uh, that language will not uh, be able to grasp in a very well manner some people say that we fear of sanskrit grammar 
they feel that um, it is very boring and tedious task to learn rama ha rama rama ha and uh, most of the grammar is quite complex but as i have said earlier without grammar you cannot proceed in sanskrit nobody is telling you to directly learn to panini ashtadhyayi but basic sanskrit constructions should be considered as mandatory for learning sanskrit avyakarana maditam it means without learning vyakarana sanskrit study will not be complete and it is quite simple let me assure you sanskrit grammar basic sanskrit grammar is quite simple there are number of prejudices among people they say that it is hard it is very much hard to learn sanskrit but this prejudice cannot uh, cannot be considered and it should not be uh, look upon now let us see uh, what does open parshala does to uh, rule out these barriers yeah so you have seen uh, you have gone through the barriers uh, which you face during learning sanskrit or there are possible uh, there are possible obstacles for your journey to sanskrit learning now uh, here at open parshala uh, we study those barriers we try to bring solutions to it so in that course of time uh, we have built uh, three courses of sanskrit grammar the basic intermediate and advanced level uh, to get you started with sanskrit grammar this type of grammar we have tried to bring it in a new way of uh, i mean a pen casting series of uh, tutorials uh, you can you can uh, subscribe and watch those videos uh, on openpathshala.com another novel concept that we are introducing is of one on one sanskrit learning we call it on demand sanskrit learning so if you want to learn french or german or any other language you just google it and get thousands and hundreds of uh, links that give you on demand classes or even uh, personal tutors but what in case of sanskrit you hardly have any source that can help you learn sanskrit in a one on one basis so we try to introduce it to your curriculum in open pathshala so you get on demand sanskrit teaching that means uh, whenever you want you subscribe to it. and uh, the teacher the expert teachers design a customized curriculum for you and that also includes a grammar literary philosophy conversation or anything you you desire to uh, learn in sanskrit and you can uh, since these classes are video conference based you can learn it from your home so the convenience and uh, uh, motivation part is covered here uh, yeah as i said these are video conferencing based lectures so no need to get out of your home or if you are in a big city you need to get stuck in traffic if you are in small city no uh, and you don't uh, know any expert sanskrit teacher so we solve the, all these type of problems with these one on one sessions so basically we have a bunch of language experts uh, samita is one of them so we try to connect you with them for your sanskrit studies and along with that we make use of uh, latest tools technology and lots of other things to make learning simple and very effective the animations in this presentation are one of them uh these are some of the reviews that of uh, some of our students have posted yeah we even got people learning from china and lots of other around the world places so let's see how what samita says about the types of learning sanskrit Uh, now let us see uh, some tips for effective learning of sanskrit uh, first is speak from day one it is very much important because language is called bhasha bhasha is derived from root bhasha it means to speak so if you don't know how to speak any particular language then it will be vain once you understand how to speak in that language it will act as an additional asset to your personality so i will suggest you i will recommend you to start speaking in sanskrit from day 1 for example what can you do you can see you can search out some sanskrit words for things that are that are around you for example how do we call chair in sanskrit then it is called asandah what is sanskrit for, for word for door then it is dwaram so in this way you can have sanskrit you can collect sanskrit words which are used for things that are around us let me give you one example there was uh, one of my neighbors who wanted to learn sanskrit what did she do she has labeled things that are around her in sanskrit for example she has labeled stick with with uh, 
a chit on which she has written dandah similarly on the uh, on the box of um, salt she has she has written lavanam uh, on the vessel of sugar she has written sharkara so in this way she has tried to remember all sanskrit words for things that are around her it is said that if you are good with sanskrit words or it if you are good with vocab then it is quite easy for you to converse in any language this problem of vocabulary will be faced by each and every person who is learning a new language so first we will concentrate on on increasing vocabulary by speaking from day one so this is one of the important tips for effective learning of sanskrit second practice what you learnt with your friends or co-learners from your class so as i have said earlier that if you have group of people who are very much interested in sanskrit you can speak sanskrit with them you can start speaking in sanskrit uh, at your home because this is the best way to start anything so you can uh, practice with what you have learned uh, with your friends that are around you you can show them you can speak with them in sanskrit so in this way practice it more and more and one thing is to be remembered while doing this we are we are bound to make lots of mistakes and without mistake if somebody does something then it becomes many a times doubtful so even if you make mistake there is no problem we can go ahead with that and learn from them then as i has as i have said that vocabulary is quite important it serves you best when it's relevant to you and your life so we can we can store our, like we can store sanskrit words uh, for things that are that are around us learn 300 basic words in sanskrit you will be able to at least speak and write some sentences in sanskrit so uh, 50% of your work is done if you learn basic 300 words of sanskrit we can also go for watching programs in sanskrit now you will ask me where are these sanskrit programs telecast where do we find telecast of sanskrit programs on dd uh, doordarshan there is a uh, sanskrit vartavali which is telecasted on uh, every sunday from uh, on every sunday morning so there you can easily uh, get touch with the people who speak in sanskrit and you can understand from them how to speak certain words what are new words which are used by them and how sanskrit constructions are made so learning is also quite important when we start learning sanskrit so it is not just about learning grammar or uh, speaking some words but also hearing some people or some programs which are in sanskrit this will surely train your ear to learn more and more sanskrit words learn basic grammar and practice writing so writing is also another important part of studying sanskrit for example if you learn certain basic uh, sanskrit constructions then you can write some 5 or 10 sentences on topic uh, for example your town your hobbies your family and you can also introduce yourself in sanskrit uh, by writing uh, in that so with small small with small topics we can surely proceed in writing sanskrit see writing sanskrit is is not a major thing because uh, it is uh, it is written in devanagari script which is quite famous with regards to other indian languages also so um, writing sanskrit is also very important and along with speaking hearing and learning then online learning many a times it is possible that we are not able to go to uh, institutions or universities where sanskrit is taught properly you have number of online learning uh, sources which will surely enable you to go through various sanskrit texts and basic grammar also let us uh, have look over some online tools uh, under first uh, category we have books pdfs and dictionaries so these are uh, major four online resources which we have put in uh, put on uh, there are other sources as well but these are quite famous and uh, used by many people uh, let us have look over the first uh, link which is given over here sanskritdocuments.org now here you can see this website uh, 
uh, under major works you can see number of uh, original texts over here under shruti we have vedas upanishads bhagavad gita then under itihasa you will get mahabharata ramayana their original texts in pdf format so this is quite additional asset for you that these will be available on PD in pdf format so this is one of major sites there, then there is another uh, site called open parshala here you can have look of open parshala website where we give three basic uh, uh, where we give three basic courses three courses basic intermediate and advanced you can surely visit this and have look and your feedback about this website then second category is of online groups there are number of online groups which discuss about sanskrit um, sanskrit language and its literature from time to time they are quite they are quite disciplined and regular um, if you if you visit them then there are some websites blogs on sanskrit learning simple sanskrit.wordpress.com is quite famous then you have youtube material where you can have easily access to sanskrit news then uh, periodic classes of sanskrit conversation see this is the website of sanskrit bharati which conducts sanskrit uh, conversation camps then we have meet sanskrit enthusiast group in your locality this is very good online uh, link where you can see uh, different group which are of sanskrit enthusiasts and who meet online and have a very good discussion about various aspects of sanskrit language so in this way we can surely go for sanskrit without keeping any prejudices in our mind we can surely opt for sanskrit and learn more and more about our ancient india uh, now it's your turn to have some questions if you have any question regarding sanskrit studies please you can uh, contact me and feel free to ask anything about sanskrit now uh, one of our friends have uh, has asked that how much time uh, is required for studying sanskrit see uh, for learning any language uh, there is no uh, uh, time it is not a time bound thing to learn any language uh, but for basic uh, sanskrit grammar it will take maximum one year to learn it it depends on the pace of person as well if you want to learn it in thorough uh, in a thorough manner then it will take 4 to 5 years to complete the whole sanskrit grammar i am including panini ashtadhyayi and other books as well other treatises as well it now it is about grammar if you want to speak in sanskrit that means if you want to uh, converse in sanskrit fluently then i am sure you will be very well versed in speaking in sanskrit within 6 months another thing it depends on person to person another friend has asked uh, what is current status of sanskrit this is very good question and it is to be reviewed again and again um, i would uh, say that it um, differs from person to person for example for me it is very good because our uh, website open parshala our courses have got great demand all over the world right now we have 50 plus students from all over the world who have opted for basic and intermediate courses so there are people who are willing to learn sanskrit but it depends on the resources it depends on the knowledge of resources if you have good people around you if you have scholars around you then you can easily then you can easily get inclined towards learning sanskrit and if you have good online resources as i have mentioned above you can surely start with that so we really have good scenario about sanskrit learning in the world also there are there is a need of scientists and as well as sanskritists who can come together and explore ancient indian texts which give, which are full of um, wisdom so uh, so re on research part i mean in the field of research uh, research uh, demand for sanskrit learners and sanskritists are very much high okay uh, now there are uh, next steps uh, for you which i would surely recommend that uh, on our website openparshala.com you will get two options grammar grammar 
and live classes so you have th three courses under grammar basic intermediate and advanced where you can access uh, to video tutorials of sanskrit grammar and live classes you will and under live classes you will be having number of options uh, of your interest and you can surely demand of that and we will provide you personal tutors okay uh, here we finish with um, our webinar our first webinar i hope you all uh, have liked it astu punar milamaha